Cable Bahamas has always been considered the innovator. People can have confidence in Cable Bahamas as a mobile operator because of our past history. We've proven to the Bahamian community that we are in fact able to manage additional services as a telecommunications company. Customers expect the best from Cable Bahamas. The technology that we bring is revolutionary technology because we know that the Bahamian public, they deserve it and Cable Bahamas is here to bring it to them. We are ready. Turn us on. Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned in to MB12 Broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Coming up tonight in news, a woman's body found in a pond in southwestern New Providence. A trade unionist taking issue with how Bahama workers are being treated. Fierce NHI will cripple the private health insurance industry continue to mount. Plus, we show you what it takes to be an Iron Man competitor. It's the Whit Monday holiday. I'm Paige McCartney, and we've got those stories and more straight ahead on MB12. <laughs> Welcome once again to MB12. Police today found the body of a young woman floating in a deep pond in bushes off the airport road. Police say it was an unfortunately violent end to a relatively quiet holiday weekend. Kyle Joaquin was on the scene. He filed this report. We still don't know the circumstances as to why this individual got in the back here. That's head of the Central Detectives Unit Chief Superintendent Paul Roll on the scene of yet another murder. This one about a mile from the main road that leads to the airport. The woman, believed to be in her mid-20s, was found floating in a pond. While many may not have known this road even existed, it is frequented by hunters. And this morning, one of them made the discovery. This is the area where BC does a lot of the transmission lines. Uh, we had a local hunter this morning came into the area and uh, when he went to check the, the uh, pond looking for birds, he came across the, the body. Rhodes said at this point they won't speculate whether this may have been the result of a domestic dispute, but that they won't rule it out. Here is the pond where the woman's body was found. Police believe she may have been here for about a day or so. Roll has confirmed that when her body was found, the fish that live in this pond had already begun to nibble on her face. It appears to have been in the water for at least a day or two and uh, had a little fishes started to uh, consume the, the face. This in individual has some injuries to the face, uh, some uh, apparent blunt force injury. Bloodstains could be seen splattered on nearby leaves. At the moment, there is no confirmed identity of the woman, but Rhodes says her description matches that of a missing 24-year-old woman. The body found today was clothed in a blue jean skirt, a blue floral, a blue floral blouse, and slippers. Police are appealing to members of the public with any information to contact them at 919, your nearest police station, or Crime Stoppers anonymously at 328-TIPS. Reporting for NB12, I'm Kyle Joaquin. Well, four American tourists are now in police custody after being found in possession of dangerous drugs. The visitors, three men and a woman, were taken into custody at around noon yesterday after a team of officers from the Tourism Policing Unit acting on intelligence went to a cruise ship at the Prince George Wharf and allegedly found the tourists with marijuana. Police expect the visitors to be charged in the court sometime early this week. And in other news, police are searching for several suspects responsible for two armed robberies. In the first incident, shortly before 11 last night, a man and a woman were sitting in their dark gray 2003 Acura vehicle in the front of a home through Little Hyde Park off Seabreeze Lane when a man armed with a handgun robbed them of a cell phone and sped off in the vehicle. In the second incident, shortly after 1 this morning, a man was sitting in his gray 2003 Alt Alteza vehicle in front of a home located in, in the Kennedy subdivision when two men armed with a handgun robbed him of his vehicle and then sped off. Investigations into both those matters are ongoing. Well, with the construction equipment still sitting on the property, there's no telling when the $3.5 million Bahamar project will open. And many Bahamar employees are being kept busy until the long-awaited opening of the resort. But a noted labor union leader is questioning the resort's move to put employees to work in positions they weren't hired for and how long the company is willing to keep these people on board with no clear opening date in sight. And I'm Good. 
The new Riviera may have gotten off to a bumpy start, but officials are still working toward making the destination one of the best tourist attractions in the region. The latest ordeal to rock the property, though, was the news that many employees have been reassigned to do other things like clean beaches and assist with urban renewal. This has resort officials deal with multiple delays, while some, like those in the opposition, thinks it's a good idea to keep workers busy. Trade Union Congress President Obi Ferguson says it's degrading to those professionals who didn't intend on leaving their jobs to clean a beach. As far as um, uh, Baha uh, Bahama is concerned, do you, do you realize what happened to those workers who left resorts and other hotels? Who got a mortgage, say, for on 15, 20 years? How long you think they, this hotel is opening up in sometime next year, they say? Could you imagine, could you imagine the strain, the emotional strain on that worker? Bahamar was initially set to open its doors on December of 2014. However, after a letter to employees was leaked to the media last year, it became clear that the resort would see its first delay. But that delay was followed by two more. Bahamar CEO Sarkis Ismerlian recently criticized government for not delivering on several promises. He also blamed the delayed opening on the contractor. But the TUC president says regardless of the emotions that have gotten involved, it's Bahamian workers who are the most affected, the ones, he said, who left secure jobs. And they go on to a company now where they're not even sure when it's going to when it's going to open. As a matter of fact, the guy may tell them tomorrow, we don't have no more money because they ain't generating no money. And I don't care how much money you have. If the money keep coming out and it doesn't come back in, eventually at some point, the man's going to say, look, I'm sorry, Mr. Ferguson. I, I think you're a good fellow, but I can't afford you no more. There's been a claim that those who left Atlantis seeking employment at Baja Mar had not for rehire placed on their file. However, Atlantis officials have since denied that claim. Baja Mar CEO has already advised that over a thousand employees have been reassigned and that an overwhelming majority of them accepted without the slightest of complaint. The Nassau Guardian has previously reported that Baja Mar is losing up to $10 million a month and has no income. But despite the constant set Backs the ads of happy Bahamar employees keep coming. Ferguson says, sadly, the planning has been bad on the part of the government. With this one, Prime Minister Perry Christie recently held a meeting with the contractor and Bahamar officials to bring a resolution to ongoing issues. There's no word as yet on the outcome of that meeting. Well, one of the toughest competitions you could ever enter is one called the Ironman. The event has become known for its grueling length and harsh race conditions and requires an extra amount of willpower, drive, and determination just to complete. This past week, our Kyle Joaquin got a taste of what actually goes into preparing for what is undoubtedly one of the toughest sports known to man. According to Webster's Dictionary, an Iron Man is defined as a man of unusual physical endurance. Every year, the Iron Man World Championship brings together 150 athletes who display sheer endurance and strength to qualify for the triathlon, comprised of a 2.4 rough water swim, 112 mile bike race, and a 26.2 mile run, and must be completed within 17 hours. This Labor Day weekend, though, in Eleuthera, several athletes will take part in a shorter version of this competition, but by all means, still a tough feat. Competitors will do a 500-meter swim, 16K bike ride, and a 5K run. One of those competitors will be Donovan Roll, also known as Jay. He invited me to take part in a bit of his training, but before we got started, he filled me in on what exactly goes into preparing for an Ironman triathlon. Of course, but the physical aspect, but you have to be mentally prepared and you have to stay focused because every day is not an easy day. Um, we're just doing training with Monster Roberts in the pool, putting in 2,000 meters, those hard swim sessions, um, riding with Cycles Unlimited crew, doing some runs with my boy Cadero. Just a lot of practice, just it's a lot of discipline. You have to eat right, put in the work, and train. Then it was time for our workout. I was warned that it wouldn't be easy, but I was ready. First up was a 200 meter swim in the 50 meter pool of the National Swim Complex. What's four laps in a 50 meter pool, right? Trust me, it's much tougher than it looks.
After a while, I was blown, but Jay didn't cut me any slack. I had to do all four laps, and eventually, I made it to the end. Then it was time for the second portion of the race, the 5.5 mile bike ride. This wasn't anywhere near as physically demanding as the swim, so I pretty much breezed through that. But what I didn't realize was that in the Ironman, the time you take to transition from one activity to the next is just as important. Ready? Yeah, buddy. You don't need this? I don't need this, Then lastly was the 1.3 mile run from the stadium to McDonald's in Oaksville and back. While the distance may seem a bit short after a swim and a bike ride, a mile long jog isn't as easy, especially when your trainer won't allow you to stop. But I made it and finished strong. After a pretty intense training session, I have a newfound respect for those entering Ironman competitions. But did I mention, I was given a medal for completing. Mr. Triathlon, super, super mini triathlon certified, Ooh. Kyle Walker. Um, just to give a next shout out to also, you know, get the training with Jake Fitness first thing in the morning. Give a shout out to the Barracuda Swim Club, um, Cyclist Unlimited. Hey, you gotta get it in. Just gotta try. You ain't gotta succeed all the time, but try. Don't give up, and he didn't give up today. Good to go, bro. Good work. Good work. Good work. Reporting for NB12, I'm Kyle Joaquin. When MB12 returns, why insurance brokers fear national health insurance will kill the private health insurance industry? That story and more when MB12 returns.